Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. We have Boston College head coach Joanna Burnaby McNamee and student athlete Taylor Soul. Uh, coach, if you could just start us off with an opening statement, and then we'll take questions. Yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely a heartbreaker for us. Uh, credit goes to Florida State. They played really hard, uh, stick, stuck to their guns with what they wanted to do offensively. Um, we made some adjustments going into the fourth quarter. I thought my team played really hard, really gutsy. But like we always say in tournament time, it's, it's hard to win when you're not making shots. And we just didn't have our shots falling. Even from the free throw line, we're a much better free throw shooter, shooting team than that. So we're a little hurt. We're disappointed. But one thing I know for sure is I think they solidified a spot in the NCAA tournament. And that's you know really what we wanted to make sure we came here and did. Thank you, Coach. All right, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get the mic holder to you. And if you're on Zoom, just use the raise your hand function. We'll go first in the room on the left here. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, sorry for the heartbreaking loss, but I want to ask you about Taylor. I mean, there was points in the game where she was yelling at her team to you know, wake up, and, and she really brought the energy. Do you think she was the, a big reason why you guys got going in that fourth? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Taylor Soul has provided us all year long with the leadership that uh, a four-year veteran should provide. But what she does uh, um, better than anybody in the country, I believe, is plays – with all her heart and soul on both ends of the floor and really lays everything she has on the line. And she did that. And this game is exactly what she's done in every game that we've played this year. So I'm super proud of her. I know, you know, a lot of the tears in the locker room aren't for themselves. A lot of them are for her, for her and for the seniors that really wanted this win. All right, we have a couple questions on Zoom. We'll go first to Megan Gentile. Go ahead, Megan, with your question. Hi, Coach. Um, Morgan Jones, obviously, for Florida State is one of their standout players. Um, you guys held her a little bit more than your last matchup. So what was the game plan, um, you know, just limiting her on offense tonight? Yeah, the, the game plan with her, like when we played last time, we kind of said, hey, back off for her quite a bit when she's on the three-point line, and she made us pay for that. So this time around, we wanted to play her just more honest and, you know, our, our regular D. And then when she's on strong side, just trying to deny her and limit her touches, which, again, Taylor Soul had that. Uh, assignment all game, and she did a great job with it. All right, our next – go ahead, Meg. Megan, did you have a follow-up? Nope, you can okay. go to the next person. Okay, our next question is from Dan Rubin. Go ahead, Dan. Coach, uh, both for you and Taylor, you're coming down the fourth quarter there, and you go on that, I think it was a 12-1 run. Um, what prompt – what kind of what prompted the, the team to gel at that point, and, and how did that all come together? And then defensively, just with the press, how did that – uh, just really start to succeed and, and help kind of feed into that run. All right, I think as a coach, you know you have a special team when you know, there's definitely some exhaustion that's playing a part out there. But when you ask them to turn it up and, and get in that full court press, that they, they believe in themselves and they really turn it up, turn up the heat, you know, starting with Tiso. I thought Dontavia was a huge uh, spark off the bench coming in and, and, and heating them up and turning them over. And, you know, that can only last for so long, though, because they were playing uh, – as hard as they possibly could. But that spark definitely started on the defensive end. It created some easy offense, some layups, and some easier offense for us. Taylor, do you comment on that as well? Yeah, I think uh, I just credit our defense. Um, and in games where you're not shooting the ball very well, you have to rely on what you can control. And defense is something that we definitely pride ourselves in. And so um, even when shots weren't falling and it felt like the game wasn't going our way, I think uh, we stuck to what we know. And we got some stops. and. Uh, I know I could feel it. I know everyone else could definitely feel it. Just the momentum swinging our way, and uh, it didn't it didn't fall our way in the end. But um, I'm definitely proud of my team uh, for that uh, that character that we showed. That no matter what's happening, that we're not going to uh, stop fighting uh, and just sink our way today. Okay, back in the room again on the left. Uh, this is for either of you guys, but I know you guys were pressing a lot. I heard that to call FSU, so I assume that was a special press. I just wanted you guys to evaluate how you did in that press and how it affected you guys. Uh, I think, yeah, FSU, uh, secret little name, but just the point is just to go crazy. It's don't think too hard. I think a lot of defense is, is scout, thinking a lot, uh, different positions, but it's really just mess up the other team and get them out of their rhythm offensively. Um, and I think uh, we were able to do that a little bit today. Uh, and that obviously, again, translates to us being able to get fast, uh, fast break points. Um, we had 12 of them today, and uh, so I think that just goes, again, to, um, to our defense. Uh, but FSU is definitely something I like just because it's fast paced. It's um, kind of all over the place. You don't really know what you're doing. You're kind of just trying to, get, trying to get stops and steals. Um, but, yeah. All right, we'll go back to Zoom. Our next question is from Andy Backstrom. Andy, go ahead with your question. 
I want to ask more about uh, Thontavia. Obviously, she had a huge impact today. Um, she had increased minutes against FSU the last time you guys played. What kind of advantage does she give you defensively against a team like FSU? Yeah, Tay is just ultra athletic, and, and she takes a lot of pride in playing defense. And whenever you have a player that takes pride in, in getting it done on the defensive end, and she's also a really good rebounder. So having her presence, because our shots just weren't falling, uh, it was nice to have a defensive spark. You know, a lot of times you go, hey, we need an offensive spark coming off the bench. Well, sometimes you need to turn to your defensive spark, and that's what uh, Dontavia provides us. Okay, next on Zoom, Chris Heidel. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Chris. Uh, this is Chris Heidel from Hermit from Radio in Baltimore. Uh, uh, what does it mean for you guys this year after a tough last year with all that COVID stuff for you guys possibly going to the NCAA tournament? Is that, is that a, uh, one of those uh, exciting things for you guys, knowing that you got back from a tough year? Yeah, I think, you know, credit goes to these players sticking it through, you know, any college athlete right now that has gone through COVID and gone through the trials and tribulations it provided, everybody's, you know, we're all so proud of them because that was a big deal mentally and, and physically for them. So for us, we discard last year, we kind of chalk it up to our COVID year and don't think much about it, but kind of picked up right where we left off from the 2019-2020 uh, season. And I do believe this is a tournament team and I hope that, you know, the NCAA selection committee feels the same way. Okay, we'll go back to Zoom. Melvin Stith, go ahead, Melvin. Thank you. Uh, Taylor, late in the game when Cameron was struggling a little bit, you went over and had some words of encouragement for her. Um, what did you say to her, and do you think doing things like that is part of your role as a team leader? Yeah, uh, I just told her uh, to keep shooting and that I love her. And I think in moments when uh, your shot isn't falling and you feel like there's a million voices in your head sometimes just a comforting reminder that someone has your back can go a long way uh, with your confidence um, and so she's someone who I tell all the time that I need her back and I hope she feels the same about me um, and it shows and it has shown um, offensively multiple times this year and I'm lucky for us it didn't show much today but uh, just in that moment and in general as a leader uh, I know obviously teams are really different but for my team specifically I know uh, sometimes just a nice little uh, reminder of support and, and confidence uh, can, can help them out a lot. All right, any other questions? Yep, in the room, on the left. Uh, one more about Cam. So she only had 10 shots. What, did they do something to take that away, or did it just kind of not work out in the flow to get her more shots? They were, they were definitely, you know, not letting her breathe out there. They, they stuck to her, and again, credit to them on, on playing a really good scout against us. So they were, they kind of stuck with her even when she was on the weak side and didn't let her kind of get into her flow. Um, so yeah, we did sort of, you know, our offense, to be honest, even when Cam is, even the, on the games when she drops a lot of points, it's not like it just gears toward her. It's just she gets open in, in, in what we run. So today she didn't get as, as open as often, but I thought, you know, that's the way sometimes it rolls. And I thought that the shots we took for the most part were good shots. They just didn't go in. All right. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you.